it's a battle for the future of America. You work for us! You work for us! A battle between those who say we need less government. We can't sustain this spending anymore. We can't. A battle between those who want to cut spending. We got to make sure that we deal with the problem now. And those who want government to do more. Between those who say unions are the solution. Who does the work? Who does the work? And those who say unions are the problem. The era of big labor is over. Democrats want to raise taxes on the rich. We always talk about the government like it's this monster in the hills. The government is us. It costs to live in a civilized society, and we all need to pay our fair share. But wait a second. How do you give a rebate to people that didn't put any bait in? I live the life of a taker. Today, there's a battle between the takers and makers. It's a battle because the government is threatening to take us from a maker nation into taker nation status. The private sector is literally dying, and the government is providing more and more pay and benefits. The union thugs are sucking the life out of America. That's an absurd statement. Some say America's wealth is like a pie. Are you getting your fair share? Now, reporting from Fox headquarters in New York, John Stossel. Where is America heading? The political left and right have two different visions for our future. Who does the work? Who does the work? Labor unions demand what they call our fair share of the pie. What's disgusting? Union busting! But others have pushed back, saying unions are the problem. Unions are killing this country, and union, unions put my father's business out of business. Some say too much government's the problem. You use that money for what? The pushing back may have started with the cries of outrage from the people of Bell, California, who discovered that their town managers paid themselves hundreds of thousands of dollars. Shame on you! Shame on you! You were a crook yesterday, you're a crook today, and you'll be a crook tomorrow. But most politicians don't break any laws. They legally give money to people they like. They want to do whatever the hell they want. Exactly. Rarely is there such blatant self-dealing as there was in Bell, but every day politicians spend your tax dollars on their vision of what America should have. And as they do, government grows. Thomas Jefferson said, it's the natural progress of things for liberty to yield and government to gain ground. But never before outside wartime has government gained so much ground? Just got to stop spending. It's got to be a point to the end of it. For most of the life of America, and when we grew the fastest, government spent in today's dollars just a few hundred dollars per person. But today, the federal government alone spends $10,000 per American, and states spend another $3,000. Total government now eats up 40% of the economy. 40%. Yet the political class always claims they need more. Many people are hurting. Help America steal workers. Pass funding for black farmers now. I average 20 to 30 meetings a day in my office, and 20 to 30 meetings are people asking for something from the federal government. Usually when Paul Ryan was first elected, he was an unusual congressman because you're what, telling your colleagues, stay out, don't do anything? Yeah. <laughs> well, in, in many of these cases, yes. The last election suddenly gave him colleagues who agreed with that. Tonight, there's a Tea Party tidal wave, and we're sending a message to them. But will they still want to cut the size of government once they spend more time in Washington? Congress listens to testimony all day, and more than 90% of it comes from people asking for stuff. I propose that Congress pass legislation. I propose that Congress ask Congress. To There's a reason people show up and beg. And it does work and it does pay off. So the people who are connected get the goodies. That's exactly right. And that's what happens in a big government society. Most people like getting free stuff. Yeah. But I think more and more people in America are beginning to wake up to the fact that this thing is coming unglued. Of course, Ryan's opponents can truthfully say, if you're upset about government spending, don't blame us Democrats. Stop spending so much. Well, that's something you should tell the Republicans, John. Democratic Congressman Rob Andrews is a friend of Paul Ryan's. President Reagan and both President Bush's spent more than either President Clinton or President Obama. So, so the all of you stop. I agree with that. But to assign responsibility to the Democrats for this problem is not factually accurate. 
It's true that in the past, government has grown just as much, sometimes more, under Republicans. But these days, it's the Democrats who are most eager to spend. There you go. Let's go. You ever think government's doing too much? This is what built the country. This is the Declaration of Independence mm -hmm. and the Constitution. It's pretty thin. Mm -hmm. Limited government. I mean, you guys have gone way beyond this. Mm -hmm. I don't think that a social security system is excessive government. I don't think that a Medicare system is excessive government. I don't think that the student loan system, I don't think that's excessive government. We have to make sure that the most vulnerable people are always protected. Protected by a bigger uh, government is the progressives' argument. And Columbia University professor Mark Lamont Hill makes their case better than most. We have suffering everywhere. Here he's giving a commencement address in California. Republicans and Democrats, poor people and rich people, middle class, black, white, everybody has to be involved in this struggle. What those of us who are at the top of the economic ladder have to do is be willing to make sacrifices that ultimately will benefit everyone. Everyone benefits when we pay a little bit more to create universal health care. Everyone benefits when we pay a little more to have better public education systems. Everyone benefits from that. And by we, you mean government. We always talk about the government like it's this monster in the hills that comes down and hands things out and takes our tax money. We are the government. Well, we, yes. Oh, yeah, only in libertarian fairy tales. In real life, the government is us. The government is us? In your ideal world, what percent of the economy should government be? For me, housing, health care, and education, are the th in addition to national defense, are things that the government must provide for people. And that's, and that's probably where we differ. So if that means 20%, I'm okay with it. If it means 30%, I'm okay with it. I don't think it will ever get that big. It's already at 40%. I mean, here, here's the graph of the growth of government since the yeah. beginning of the republic. For most of the history of America, it was tiny, less than 5%. Right. Now, Much of that has to do with inefficiency and waste. But you want more. I don't want more inefficiency and waste. Where you and I and where I part ways... It's not into, big enough now? It, it is not big enough now. It is not big enough now. Really? It is awfully big. So big that we're now more than $14 trillion in debt. And yet, they keep spending more. There you go. There you go. We are done. But how will we pay for it? We fight most about the income tax. Raising taxes is a recipe for disaster. But there are so many other taxes. Payroll, corporate, capital gains, estate, sales taxes, in fact, equal to the income tax, are dozens of sneaky taxes you may not even know about. You and I pay them all day long, from the moment I wake up and turn on a light. I pay more when I brush my teeth and license my dog. My building pays property and fuel taxes and adds it to my monthly bill. And when I leave home to take the subway to work, I pay the Metropolitan Commuter Transportation Mobility Tax. At work, I make some phone calls. Yes, absolutely. Or get a bite to eat or a soda to drink. Uh, I'd like a smoked turkey in this. When I gas up my car, as much as a quarter of the price of gas is federal, state, and city excise taxes. Thank you. People pay sales taxes all day long. So many taxes. I need a drink. I'm lucky I don't smoke. Yet some union protesters say we should pay more. And all those taxes are just fine, and say progressives. It costs, it costs to live in a civilized society, and we all need to pay our fair share. Our fair share. Progressives say taking from the rich to help the poor is simply the fairest system. No, the fairest system is the one that that rewards the makers in society as opposed to rewarding the takers in society. Arthur Brooks wrote The Battle, which argues that a fight between free enterprise and big government will shape our future. The way that our culture is moving now is toward more redistribution, toward more progressive taxation, exempting more people from paying anything and loading more of the taxes onto the very top earners in our society. But I'm wealthy. It's kind to take it away from me and give it to people who need it more. Actually, it's not. The government does not create wealth. It uses wealth that's been created by the private sector. Americans are in open rebellion today because the government is threatening to take us from a maker nation into taker nation status. A taker nation? Well, there are plenty of takers. I'll introduce you to one when we come back. Some people say either you're a maker or a taker. 
And today, the makers and takers are battling for America's soul. We've done our best to get everybody a voice. Some of this week's union protesters took the battle to Fox News. Maybe some are angry because I've called government union bosses takers. Union activists say, how dare you call us takers? We're state workers, and we have worked really hard, and we've taken cuts in pay. An attack on the public workers is an attack on all unions. The reason we're in this problem, the reason we face a $3.6 billion deficit, is because politicians in the past have deferred the tough decisions. In Wisconsin, protesters from limited government groups showed up to defend Governor Walker's attempt to limit union benefits. This is about making it fair between private sector workers who are struggling and public sector unions that frankly have had a cushy deal. And there is something off when union protesters call efforts to limit union power a war on workers. He may not know that most workers are not in unions. Only 12% of American workers are. So when union protesters chant that unions built the middle class, some workers respond by saying that unions hurt the middle class. I mean, hard work built this country, not unions. This week, the debate degenerated into some Americans calling others fascists. It's a battle because we're deciding on our culture. 60% of Americans take more out of the public finance system than they pay in. They get more in public services than they pay in taxes. How do you give a rebate to people that didn't put any bait in? There are makers and there are takers. And I live the life of a taker. Star Parker was a taker. She lived off welfare for seven years. She says the welfare bureaucracy encouraged her to stay dependent. And on the form, they just made sure that you didn't work, you didn't save, and you didn't get married. And if you didn't work or save or marry, you got a check. Right. Two and checks. First and the 15th. <laughs> and let's go Food back. Food stamps, too. And all your medical expenses paid and all the daycare for your kids so I can hang out at Venice Beach all afternoon. So she did. The creators of welfare meant well meant to help people, but handouts have unintended consequences. Well, once I found out about welfare, why work when I can hang out out here? This was fabulous, you know? Even if welfare encouraged dependency, Thank progressives you. say, other programs don't. We have things like public housing. We have all sorts of things that are designed not to give people just a handout, but to give people a fighting chance. A fighting chance? So many people vandalized their public housing projects that governments ended up destroying them. Again, and again. They build it, it wrecks neighborhoods, and then they blow it up. Public housing doesn't wreck neighborhoods. Unattended public housing wrecks neighborhoods. I think that the basic affordances of democratic citizenship are housing, health care, and education. We have to make sure that... What happened to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness? That's like secret code for housing, health care, and education. It, it seems to me... Well, but that's a big step beyond. You can't have life, liberty, and happiness if you, if you don't have access to a hospital. You can't have it if you don't have access to a basic education. Those but if you life. leave people alone to have life, liberty, and to pursue their own happiness, that's different from taking money from one group of people to give other people housing and health care. First of all, we're not giving people housing and health care. And people pay taxes. Even people who live in public housing pay taxes. What we're doing, again, is creating an investment. We're not teaching dependency? No, I think that you can, you can, you always run the risk of intergenerational laziness. But I don't think that the welfare state necessarily means that. But it does, says Star Parker. It's so much easier to take than to make. I think that that's one of the greatest tragedies of becoming a taker, is you don't think about that somebody else had to make this, and you don't think about You're what if I tried on my own. I was just entitled to it.